Good morning, folks. Real quickly, this quake was downgraded from 6.4 yesterday, and otherwise it was a tale of unusual location rumbling, as you can see here. Here's the review of some basic propositions at this channel. Climate change is real. But as global warming projections rest upon two decades of failure, we find that the extreme climate swings may be a better description, with a genesis in our star rather than in man, and a shift to cold potentially coming soon. Which is why I've been blatantly ignoring the Heartland Institute's discussions of late, along with any group that seeks to minimize climate change or use the imperfection of human modeling as a tool for deregulating polluters. Pollution is poison. It's just not driving the weather like they say it is. How about an oldie but goodie? This is probably the fourth or fifth physicist I've seen take a run at the math of the IPCC and come out laughing so hard they keel over. Or, if that's not your style, might I suggest seeing how we have underestimated natural forcing on sea level rise. Here's Uyen candidate number 11. Still a tropical storm rather than a typhoon as of the early morning hours now predicted to make it over the Philippines into the South China Sea and impact west of Hong Kong. We see a touch of rain potential in Northeast Australia, high pressure cell catching a bit of the vapor but regulating otherwise, while the convergences appear to descend on New Zealand here. We see the North Atlantic low forcing this line across France and Germany mostly, then spreading out into the continent with a tiny low east of Italy as well. Cloud cover should pretty much say the same thing here. The extreme shift is about to be underway in the United States. The low to the north in Canada keeps growing and won't stop until she's feeding Arctic air to large portions of the eastern states. Before it does so, its convergence equalizes to very different air masses and will pay the price once more on the ground beneath them. Remember folks, CME impact is expected by the experts today. I don't expect you'd see much more than some moderate auroras. Nothing significant yet in the telemetry, but it's something to watch. Flaring has been fairly low, and as I checked this morning, it was a good lesson in flare spotting. If you can catch one mid-pop, try the SDO-94, the green one. When EVE is down, it's your best bet, and you need no experts to tell you where that tiny flare came from, do you? The sunspot number? plummeting and will continue. It's only worth analyzing the central spots here. The southern group is magnetically separated, but I will call a gamma class up north. Red negative cuts up the center of two positive blue sides. Positive cannot be separated with a continuous line, and that group is beta gamma. Looking to Iswa, we see the force to the southern coronal hole and very weak mini openings near the equator and incoming up north. They're all pretty easily visible here, and the northern is actually just the tip of an iceberg. Mercury and Venus keep their connections and head for the backside while Mars and Earth break from the big spots and come more centrally. The mere position of the planets helps to understand today's shift. And as we check out some of the other planetary positions, let me remind you that the Mobile Observatory Project heads into Canada today. Fingers crossed for internet access at all times, but if I don't have it, you'll be on your own for the news that day. Check out observatoryproject.com for more. Eyes open. No fear, it's 6 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone. Thank you.